Well, look, Enterprise Ireland has been in the business of supporting startups for decades now, but rather than going back decades, for example, I'll, I'll just I'll give you a few from, um, you know, from from relatively recent years companies that have been in the news recently. So for example, Flipdish, which is the online ordering platform. So Flipdish is class of 2017 for us, I think. Um, you know, it's not that long ago and Flipdish are absolutely flying along now. They've, um, I think they've got in and around 80, 90 jobs, possibly even more. Uh, 80 or 90 was the last number I saw. They're going to be hiring very aggressively because they've just raised, uh, they've just raised in the region of 40 million a euro from uh, from Tiger Global, who are a you know significant global investor in technology startups. So it's a great story, uh, and uh, they're growing fast. Uh, Glowfox would be another one, and Glowfox. Uh, Connor Lachlan actually is one of our panelists at at HPSU Showcase, uh, talking about uh, his his story. Uh, but Glowfox similarly uh, up around seventy or eighty jobs uh, for us. Glowfox were a class of twenty fifteen. Um, and uh, Glowfox are, you know, growing their revenues uh, rapidly, as indeed are, 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 are all the examples I'll give you. And uh, they also went on to fund to raise additional funding alongside their existing investors of Enterprise Ireland and other uh, and other investors. Uh, they raised uh, they raised ten million last year uh, to accelerate their growth in the U.S. market. And lastly, maybe just. Uh, 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 another interesting example in the in the software and technology space is a company called Brightflag, and Brightflag do legal billing software. Um, and interestingly for us, uh, so Brightflag were uh, we funded Brightflag in 2014 and 2015. Um, initially, 2014 was under competitive start funding, so that's our initial 50k offer okay and uh, we supported bright flag at that real early stage with the 50k and then they went on in 2015 and indeed after that to get further uh, high potential startup funding and they raised 28 million um in the last number of months um late last year i think it was late late in 2020 they raised in around 28 million and um, again existing investors taking part in that round but it was led by a new incoming investor which i think is one um one peak, I think, uh, uh, um, a l large global uh, VC. So, you know, we have loads of examples and loads of evidence and loads of companies that have been on that journey. And when we talk about, when we talk to all our existing clients and the incoming uh, HPSUs, you know, we have lots of access to those entrepreneurs uh, in terms of, you know, helping to, you know, helping to, to use that um, alumni uh, to support the existing entrepreneurs. And we've lots of experienced development advisors in the team who've been on this journey on multiple occasions with lots of clients. So there's, there's, there's tons and tons of experience there. There's, mm -hmm. there, there's hundreds of alumni that we've learned from. So, uh, but for every new entrepreneur doing it for the first time, it is the first time and it is daunting. So it's to try and help them to overcome the challenges and the hurdles that they face. And something else that's been quite transformed by the pandemic is uh, events and the this year's startup showcase is going to be like no other. How has the pivot to virtual been for this event? Um, uh, I suppose when we start, we're, 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 we're a little bit fortunate on with the HPSU team that our showcase event always takes place in February every year, okay? So we got our showcase last year out of the way just before COVID hit, which means actually that we've the benefit of watching 10 months of people absolutely tearing their hair out, trying to work out how you do events online. So we've learned quite a lot actually um, through, uh, through events that we've run like our International Markets Week, but also through events where we've sat on panels and been involved and doing interviews and uh, you know, engaging with our clients and engaging with our community uh, you know, using the online tools. So look, it has been hard. It's been a challenge this year. It's the first time HBSU Showcase will have gone online. And it's not just the conference itself that's online. It's, um, uh, it's all the meetings. So th the great thing about HBSU Showcase was always the networking. OK, so we have keynote speakers and we have panels that, you know, share wonderful information. But for a lot of our companies and for a lot of our investors and, and, and ecosystem stakeholders like multinationals that are supporting startups and, uh, you know, and the BICs and regional accelerators and everyone who's involved, not just the investors. This was a great opportunity. They, we, you know, there'd be 
you know, hundreds of people milling around in Crow Park as it was in recent years uh, within the exhibition area, all getting to meet the stakeholders, all of our companies getting to meet the stakeholders. We've had to move all those meetings and networking online this year. So when showcase, when the, when the, the event in terms of the speaking part of the event and the presentations part of the event is over, a lot of them, those meetings, those one-to-one -one meetings are now taking place digitally uh, through, uh, through, through, through the online platform that we're using. So um, really excited, uh, look excited. I think the, on, the, on the plus side, we've always been limited by capacity constraints. Uh, for HPSU showcase, we sort of we we top out every year at about six hundred ish people, um, and this year because it's virtual and it's online, we'll have uh, we'll have quite a few more um, in attendance, and uh, we're very excited to be able to present that opportunity not just to the class of twenty twenty. Uh, investees and client companies who would normally form the bulk of the companies in the room, but we've opened it up this year. So you know, companies that are you know, people that are thinking of being a startup, people that are at pre-seed stage, at CSF stage, at accelerator stage, that are wondering what the hell this is all about. You know, why, you know, you know, they, every, everyone's thought of starting a business at some point. I firmly believe that everybody has thought about it. Very few ever act on it. And I think this year for the first time, the opportunity to be able to share the stories and share the journey with potential entrepreneurs of the future uh, is a real positive um, from having a virtual showcase. So I hope in future years, I mean, I think a lot of people are wondering, well, you know, where are we going to be in future years? Are we going to still just look to shove loads of people into a room and make it an invite only? And it's quite a, you know, it's an event that only a certain number can attend or whether you look to some sort of hybrid event um, that, uh, that that takes place uh, in person and online. So who knows? But look, it's been a challenge, Elaine, but it's been uh, it's been a welcome challenge. And, uh, you know, and a shout out to the two team members on our side who've 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 put blood, sweat and tears into uh, into showcase this, this year. And that's uh, that's Gavin O'Connell and Tara Malloy done a magnificent job. So well done them. Thanks so much for talking to us today. Niall. It was a really interesting interview. Thank you. Thanks very much, Elaine. Thank you.